This past weekend, the first half of the final season slash season 9 of MLP FIM was extended uh, by a week thanks to the premiere of the direct-to-television slash direct-to-video slash direct-to-streaming or, or direct-to-Netflix made-for-TV special slash movie Rainbow Road Trip. And the biggest question I think anybody has coming out of it, you know, either it's through reviews they do here on YouTube or stuff they talk about on the message boards and social media, is who was this meant for? Now, it was nice of the fact that they um, gave us something to kind of tide us over for at least a month, according to what I understand. Um, because basically August 3rd is the earliest, from what I've heard, that the second half is going to premiere. Now, that's not entirely true that we know of. It could be August 10th, but August 3rd looks like the most logical possible um, uh, time frame for this to happen. Now, with that said though, again, the obvious question that a lot of fans have whether they talked about it, reviewed it, uh, message boards, or you, here on YouTube or social media, is who was this special meant for? Because when you look at the special itself, it's kind of noticeable that there are moments that tend to lend themselves towards, the, lend themselves, or kind of lean, lead the, uh, lean themselves, as to say, lend and lean themselves. And I'm kind of doing this unscripted on the fly, but kind of lean, lend themselves to be targeted at a younger audience. One of the most notable things that a lot of people look at is the pacing of this special slash movie. I mean, some people compare it to the My Little Pony 2017 movie where the pacing was just right. Like, it was slow at times, it was, but then it picked up and was quick, and then it was just like in the middle. It was like kind of a decent pace. And it had something for everybody. It wasn't just leaning towards one, you know, one audience or another. It was like, it had, it was basically like it had everything for everyone. But when people look at Rainbow Road Trip and the fact that there was not much advertising for it um, outside of what was announced, I think, at New York Comic Con, what was hinted at at last year's San Diego Comic Con, what was showcased and hinted at at several of the pony uh, conventions this year uh, so far. Not much was brought up about it besides, you know, information that Equestria Daily got, the MLP forums got, the My Little Pony Facebook page got. And outside of that, the only other thing that was relatable to it was several new figures and collectibles had come out, like the Rainbow Fied uh, Wings Twilight, or the uh, salute or the salon style um, pinky and rarity or even the celestia that falls into the category on that same cat the, the celestia luna that falls into that same category but still the question remains was well, the question remains is who was this meant for because like I said the one thing people point out is the pacing was at a slow pace it was like slower than what you would expect even in an average 22 to 30 minute episode. And the question is, why was that? And some people would look at the fact that the pacing was done due to the fact that they wanted to aim mostly most of this episode towards a younger audience. Mostly maybe, in my opinion, maybe the originally intended audience uh, that the show was meant for when it was first created, even though that audience has pretty much grown up and become part of the adult fan base or have moved on from the show, sadly, themselves and onto other things. But still, you know, it's trying to obviously speak or lend itself more towards that younger audience that, like I said, the show was originally meant for when it first began. Now, were there moments at times that seemed that they were aimed more towards adults um, uh, when it came to situations? Absolutely. Um, you know, Kerfuffle, I think that was her name, Kerfuffle, 
she had a kind of steampunk mechanical prosthetic leg and I haven't watched all of it yet uh, from what I've seen so far it looks okay I like it uh, but anyway one thing that Dr. Wolf brought up in his review was this is something with kerfuffle that with her mechanical prosthetic leg that could go over maybe a young kid's mind. And of course there were other things as well. It's like, you know, you know, there were certain moments like, you know, Rarity, you know, making her comments at times of you looking at the royal suite and going, oh, how rustic, you know, kind of gasping and going, how rustic and charming. And then the next day when they get up and Twilight comments, it wasn't the worst you know, you know, worst night of sleep and Rarity comes up and says most definitely in the top three or the bottom three and young kids would probably not catch those kind of like references or acknowledgements and all that uh, due to the fact that the more interested and intrigued in the, in, in the ponies and the colors and all that that are being on display. So there were moments in between where you had things you know, you you had the special lend itself more to, you know, attracting and getting the attention of the younger audience, but then there were times you had it lend itself to the adult audience with some of its small references and acknowledgments here and there. Um, but if I was to answer the question to myself of who was Rainbow Road Trip originally meant for, I would have to say it's kind of in the middle with just a slight favoritism towards the younger audience. And what I mean being in the middle is there was something basically for both audiences. Like I said, there was something for, there was stuff there for the adults and there was stuff there for the kids, for the younger kids. But you could definitely tell at times it lent itself more towards that younger audience. Now, the person that wrote the script was Kim Byer Johnson, but the person that directed it um, had worked on, I think, Littlest Pet Shop Work of Wonders or something like that, A World of Wonders. And you can almost tell that this director kind of had an influence in how Kim wrote the script. It's like Kim, despite how you feel about her in some of the episodes she wrote in Friendship is Magic, some have been good, some have not been good, and some have been in the middle. Um, you could kind of tell that the director, I can't think of the name right now, was kind of inf inferential all uh, inferential, I should say, in, in Kim's writing of the story. Like, you know, Kim wanted to, it looked like to me, it, to, in my opinion, it seems to me that Kim, from what I've seen and what other people have talked about, wanted to kind of put a middle ground there with the special, and she succeeded in doing so, but you could tell that there is, like I said, there is that slight favoritism towards the younger audience being targeted, and I think that's the way the director came in, who, as far as I know, I've never seen this, heard about this person directing anything MLP -y, um, at all. So I can only guess that this person directed her to kind of show a little bit more favoritism to the younger audience. Like it's a, like maybe they sat down with her and said, yeah, this is all good. You can keep that middle ground, but kind of lean it more in favor of the younger audience. And I think the reason, and I think the director was the main reason that Kim's story was more at a slower pace. Like maybe she wanted it to be a little quicker, kind of have a balancing out like they did with the movie. But I'm guessing the director, like I said, had a say in how the script would be uh, paced out, how certain moments would go and everything. I, I, I'm sure that, um, and I'm sure Kim probably didn't have no problem with the director whatsoever, but I'm thinking what happened is it's more along the lines of the director said, hey, look, you can keep your middle ground, you can have stuff there for the adult fans, you can have stuff there for the young fans, but kind of lean more towards the young fans uh, throughout. Make it basically the director, as Dr. Wolf put it, kind of simplified, excuse me, simplified the story uh, for everybody to enjoy, and, but make it more in favor of the young audience. Because when you think about, uh, think about how the story climaxed at the end, kind of came to a head at the end, there was no real villain. There was no real antagonist. There was no real renegade, rebellious pony in the group doing, you know, causing all the color to disappear on purpose. No. It was just a misunderstanding. It was a misunderstanding of the fact that uh, there was a machine, there's a machine, a rainbow machine that helps provide 
color and hope into the town. So obviously when it malfunctioned, one of the characters we get introduced to called Mayor Sunny Skies loses hope. It kind of causes him to down, kind of be doubtful about himself, take the blame, and then this kind of causes a domino effect which affects every other pony in town. So, you know, obvi so obviously, you know, with that being the case and the fact that the ultimate moral of the story and lesson of the story is to never lose hope, no matter what the situation may be, yeah, it's a good message for, you know, everyone, including adults, but you could tell that the message was simplified, as Dr. Wolf put it, to be more understood by the young kids, by the younger audience, which is why when, you know, someone asked a question, you know, asked that question to someone like me, like, of who, Ra oh, who was Rainbow Ra Road Trip intended for, this is why I say it's kind of in the middle with a bit of favoritism, like a 5% favoritism or 10% favoritism um, in favor of, you know, you know, it was ninety. It was basically, it's ninety percent in the middle, with ten percent showing favoritism to the younger audience, especially like at the end when they sang the, you know, "Living in Color," uh, song. It sounded like, and even Doctor Wolf and a few others have pointed this out. It sounded like something you would get out of Equestria Girls, just the way it began. So just the way it began and it continued, and I'm not saying it was not a bad song, it was actually very enjoyable, but the point is, point is, if you can identify and say it sounded more like a pop song you would hear in Equestria Girls, or the kind of pop song you would hear in something like a Barbie series or movie, then uh, yeah, it would cause you to kind of look at the fact that, or agree with the fact that in the it's kind of in the middle where it's like 90% in the middle with 10% favor, showing favoritism uh, towards a younger audience. And I know I'm repeating myself saying that, but it's pretty much something you got to get. I want to get across here is the majority of fans loved this, even those that didn't like it at first went back, rewatched it, and suddenly realized hey, it is as good as people say it is. But I think those those that watched it would agree that it's kind of like that, it's kind of right in the middle at 90% with 10% leaning in favor of the younger audience being targeted more so than the adults. Just a, you know, just a way, just because of the pacing that the uh, special had and the message that was kind of simplified at the end. And uh, for even a younger audience to, under to kind of understand and everything. I mean, again, there were moments for everybody, don't get me wrong. I mean, heck, Twilight not, you know, geeking out like she normally does, but when Petunia, who is, we find out, the love interest of Sunny Skies, the mayor, and who accepts his proposal to be his wife uh, at the end of the special, Petunia, who's doing almost a lot of jobs in the town, apparently, you know, she's a hotel manager, she's a librarian, she's this, she's that. When Twilight asks her, do they, ha does she, do they have a magic section, and she says... And she giggles and points out, here's this section on magic, here's that section on magic, here's that section on magic. Twilight doesn't geek out like she does uh, in Forgotten Friendship. She's just like, mm -hmm, kind of like, kind of like is just happy about what she sees here. So, so yeah, you have those moments that you can get a kick out of, kind of look out, for, look at from an adult perspective of how Twilight reacted. Um, but. Overall, when when one thinks about, but when one really gets down to it, it's kind of in the middle. I think it was, for, and I think honestly, it was meant for everybody. Kim wanted to make sure of that. Kim ba Bayer Johnson, Johnson, she she wanted to make sure of that. But I think, in a sense, even though she achieved that goal of making sure everybody enjoyed it and it was for everyone, you can kind of tell there's a little bit of that ten percent favoritism towards the younger audience like it was meant by 10% it was meant for them you could tell there was a little bit of favoritism in that direction even though it's 90% in the middle so but that's really all I can say on it guys what are your thoughts what do you think about Rainbow Road Trip who do you think Rainbow Road Trip was originally meant for do you think it was like I said 90% in the middle where it was meant for everybody with just 10% favoritism leaning towards the younger audience or do you think it was more for the adults or more for the younger audience. Let me know what you guys think. 
Let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. I'd love to hear what you have to say on it. And I will talk to you later. Sorry this video went beyond 15 minutes for those that don't like that. But hey, this video is going to go much longer. So peace out. God bless. Take care. But let me know what you think.